I just want to say thank you guys for uh, tuning in and today we're going to be making a pin from a kit. So anytime I make a pin it usually starts out the same way and that's consulting a big box of pin material. So I have this box of various blanks I've collected over the years, some of them that I've made, some of them that I've just accrued various ways and uh, I got a couple stray pin kits in the box as well. So you see me uh, taking out one of the blanks that happens to be one that I made recently and uh, it's a alumilite blue and uh, kind of a silverish black pearl acrylic and then I'm finding a couple of uh, pin kits and the reason I actually got two kits out one of them had the brass tubes and the other one the brass tubes were missing from but I like the color of those components better so I'm going to use that kit alright so first step here is you lay out your tubes on the blank and you kind of mark them out and what we're going to do is we're going to cut the blank down to size so now you can see we're here at the uh, metal cutting bandsaw and it just slices through this aluminite really easily uh, so we cut the blanks down so next we're going to have to drill them out and so this here is a 7 millimeter drill bit and it's sized perfectly for the brass tubes that we're going to be gluing into the blanks. So I put it in a vise just to hold it steady. You know, it drills very easily just like wood. Uh, make sure it's square, that's the most important thing because you want the hole straight through the blank. That'll help out when turning later. But uh, So we're just going to drill both of these blanks all the way through. Okay, so now that the holes are drilled, we need to glue the tubes into the blanks. And so I'll start off by taking some 220 grit sandpaper and kind of scuffing the tubes up a little bit. And this just gives more surface area for the glue to adhere to when we glue them inside the blanks. Now you can see for these, I'm just using this Gorilla uh, five minute two part epoxy. It says five minute, but really you got to let it set a lot longer than that before you can actually use it. But it does start to set up in five minutes. I mix it thoroughly. I cut through this so you didn't have to watch epoxy being mixed. But uh, a lot of people use thick CA glue. Sometimes I do, but you know you can use whatever. So. One trick I like to do when I'm doing these is I put a little bit of epoxy on the end of a tube, I stick it in the blank, and kind of just move it around a little bit just to get that one end coated, and then I'll coat the tube more and insert it from the other side and twist it kind of as it's going in, and that, that just helps it to coat the entire inside of the blank and the outside of the tube at the same time. So you just want really good... Uh, coverage of the epoxy on both the brass tube and the blank. That's the goal. Now you can see I'm kind of tapping on the blank, just trying to get the tube to go down in a little bit more. All right, so now they're in. Uh, we just have to let them sit until the epoxy sets up. All right, so it's been a couple hours, and uh, the epoxy set up. And what I'm doing now is called flush trimming the blank. And that tool inside the drill is what's called a flush trimmer. And basically... It has a shaft that is the diameter of the inside of the brass tube. So it goes in the tube and it has a carbide cutting head on the end of it. And what it does is it just trims the outside of the blank down flush with the brass tube. And the reason we do that is so that the blank and the tube are exactly the same level, if you will. So when you assemble the pin, there's no gaps. And one tip when using that is start it wide open and 
gently cut into the blank because if you start it with it pressed against the blank, there's a good chance it could uh, cause it to shatter. What I'm pointing out here is that this is a trim line pin kit, but it's important to note that with a trim line kit, you need trim line bushings. And the bushings are made so that they are the exact same size as the components of the pin. So it gives you something to turn the blank down to so that you know it'll fit the final components when you're done. So this thing here I'm putting into the lathe is called a pin mandrel. And what it does is it just holds the blanks in position and you slide on the bushings in the correct order and then you slide on your blanks. It's important to remember to put your blanks on in the correct order so that the pattern kind of continues to flow. And that's why I cast my name in the blank just because it helps line everything back up uh, when I get ready to turn a pin. All right, so now for turning this acrylic, this is the Harbor Freight lathe, and I, what I do is I turn the speed up as high as it'll go, and I have a carbide lathe tool, and that's actually one that I, I made. I, uh, I just bought a carbide insert and put it on that tool, drilled and tapped it and put it on that tool and then made a handle for it. But you start off, you have to take the blank from square down to round. So you don't take as aggressive passes on it at first. You kind of lightly just nick all the corners off until it starts to become round. And once it's fully round, then you can be a little more aggressive with it. But with any acrylic, um, when it's still square, there's a good chance if you try to take too big of a cut, you're going to bust it and it's going to shatter. And that's another reason why I like to use make sure I have a very good coating of glue or epoxy between the brass tube and the blank. So basically the goal here is you just keep turning down till you reach the bushings. And that's what the bushings are for. And you see I, I kind of continue to check it and stop and, and make sure it's round, make sure there's no flat spots left, anything like that. But um, the bushings are there, so you turn down to the bushings. I usually leave it slightly proud of the bushings so that way when we go to sand we have a little bit of room to sand it when we finish it's uh, perfect so now that all the turning is done we're gonna start sanding so now you see I have 220 grit to start with and I'll go through several different grits you'll see here. But one thing you'll notice watching this is that the lower the grits, the more time it takes to sand. And as you get progressively finer, the uh, time that you spend sanding is, is significantly reduced. When sanding, you'll get these circular sanding marks on the blank. So between each grit, I'll take and sand lengthwise with the blank. And that gets any... Uh, circular scratches out and so then when you sand with the next grit it makes it very evident if you still have scratches left so it's just changing directions of the scratches so that you can see the previous scratches if that makes sense so now we're on the 320 and we're gonna do it the same way um, with a lathe on and then now lengthwise and you see that was even though it's sped up a lot that's significantly less time. 500 grits next, uh, same way. You can see I'm already going lengthwise. Now we're at 600 grit. You see that was much shorter. Now 800, which again is even shorter. Uh, next we're gonna have 1000 grit. All right, now we're at 1200 and you'll notice it's kind of hard to see because the video sped up but it, that was uh, wet sanded and now 1500 that's also wet sanded. i have a little cup of water that i dipped the uh, sandpaper in and finally we'll use 2500 grit and that's where we'll stop with the sanding now it's on the polishing i really like this mcguire's uh it's for cars but they have two different ones a 105 and 205 and uh, one of them's a little more, more aggressive cutting and the other one's more polishing so I'll use one 
and polish it and then uh, use the other and then that will be the final polish and that's where we'll stop. Okay, so this next part I uh, accidentally lost the footage of. Um, I thought I was hitting record on the camera and I was actually stopping the recording. So I'll just pause it right here and I'll show you a diagram so I can kind of talk through the process. So the pin is basically done. When you're done on the lathe, the pin's done and you need to assemble it. And what that thing is in the background is it called a pin press. And what it does is it basically forces the parts of the pin kit together. And so you can see in the diagram, you've got the tip and you've got the middle center band and the cap and the mechanism. And all of those components are friction fit inside the brass tube that's glued inside the blank. So all that pin press does is it holds those individual components and then presses. It's got a lever on it and it just presses the parts together and it keeps everything pretty straight and it's, it's pretty pretty nice to have if you're going to be making a lot of pins. Um, you can use a vise, you can use clamps, you can use anything really to to force the components together. But once you do that, uh, you assemble the pin and basically you're done. So now you can see the pin is done. And I think this uh, blue and gray black acrylic came out really nice. That's a uh, gunmetal pin kit and uh, it just came out Super, super nice. Thank you for watching, and I uh, hope you learned a little something. Have a good one.